rights that are rights for Germans and then rights for Syrians is very hard for people to understand and accept. So they challenge that. Uh, an obsession about understanding the causes of migration and understanding the root causes. The European Union right now is putting a lot of money and funds into uh, programs that are supposed to research on uh, and target interventions on the root causes of migration across Africa. So what are the root causes? And here that question isn't that simple and some scholars will say that question isn't even useful. The causes, we know them. Uh, their conflict, their political insecurity, and economic insecurity. Those are the root causes, and they're mixed. So it's not someone fleeing just because of conflict or just because they want to find a better job. They wouldn't come all the way to Europe just for that. Most of the migration is south-south. If you're an Afghan today and you desperately need a job, the first place you'll go to is Iran, where you can land a job within a week as a construction worker and send money back home. You won't come to Europe just for a job. Stepping out of the crisis mode and seeing everything as a problem or a crisis that Europe is facing, let's go back to what seems normal to us. So what is normal for a German won't be what is normal for a Syrian and for an Afghan in law. But for them as human beings, they have the same aspirations. So again, understanding that there are human rights that are rights for all and then having rights that are rights for Germans and then rights for Syrians is very hard for people to understand and accept. So they challenge that and it's good to challenge a normal and that's how our societies have evolved. For most migrants that I've met, uh, Europe is a land of rights. First of all, that's the rhetoric governments use when intervening in countries like Iran. They're exposed to the human rights discourse. You would be surprised how clear it is for them that governments intervene in their countries for uh, the advancement and the betterment of human rights. The discourse that is used for political purposes, people really believe in. And that is what drives them to come here. Not jobs, but the promises of the human rights that they're entitled to and that they learn about. It's very important to remember again that not all Afghans will want to come here, not all Somalis, not all Eritreans, but those who feel like they have no other choice and whose life may be under threat and whose future may be completely compromised, those who aspire to leave uh, will leave, but not all aspire to leave. The social welfare discourse is one that comes up often when we speak about migrants to Europe. They're coming here to benefit from the social welfare is what we hear. Actually, they have no clue about the social welfare and research has shown, um, academic research has shown that the social welfare is in no way part of the initial decision to migrate. That has been proven by evidence and analysis. It might shape which country they choose once they're in Europe. So they might hear that children are better treated in Sweden, that's often what you'll hear, or that uh, France may have a better, uh, med better welfare system than the UK, but still they'd prefer to go to the UK than to France. So again, uh, France is a transit country for most migrants, but it has a great welfare system. So that disproves uh, that whole rhetoric that the social welfare is what they're after. They actually don't even know what a social welfare system is. In countries where you've had decades of war, there is no such thing as a social welfare system. They don't expect it. What they want is to come to countries in Europe and contribute. They want to become someone. They want to fulfill their potential. Mm -hmm.